students of today are often called digital natives. They've been referred to as millennials, the I generation, the me generation, the global generation, and generation next. Almost all have grown up with a computer in the home, more than one TV, multiple cable stations, access to the internet, cell phones, iPods, personalized websites, and social media. They are unique to all other generations that came before them. The rate in which technological developments have advanced is like none other in history. How does this make them different? What does their future look like? Starting with an overview of the two previous generations, we'll get a closer look at what sets the Y generation apart from others before them. Meet the baby boomers. Baby boomers were born from 1946 to 1964. They are 77.3 million strong. Boomers were the first generation to grow up with the television in the home. The typewriter, telephone, and transistor radio were all part of this generation's technology. Televisions were usually reserved for the family room, and families often viewed shows together. Boomers grew up at a time of dramatic social change. Boomers grew up in a relatively prosperous and safe environment. This generation lived through the era of Woodstock, Watergate, Vietnam War, and the Cuban Missile Crisis. This generation, as young adults, were involved with social activism. Peace rallies and protests were the means for this generation to be heard. Boomers often are associated with the civil rights movement, the feminist cause in the 1970s, gay rights, handicap rights, and the right to privacy. Boomers, as a group, are the wealthiest, most active, and most physically fit generation to that time. Meet Generation X, born 1965 through 1980. They're 51 million people strong. The first generation to use personal computers, have cable TV, the internet, and were of the video game era, often referred to as the MTV generation. Generation Xers were often the products of broken homes, experiencing the highest divorce rate in history. This high divorce rate created many single working parents. So Generation X were the first to be coined latchkey kids. They were often left alone. Xers were the first generation to grow up watching televised warfare. They witnessed the collapse of the Soviet Union, the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the AIDS epidemic. War on drugs, the Persian Gulf War, and the dot-com bubble. They had grunge, alternative rock, and hip-hop. As a group, Generation X is apt to question authority, is cynical, and independent. The group's sense of independence is partially attributed to Gen Xers spending their childhoods as latchkey kids, fending for themselves while both parents worked. They were the first generation to have a lesser standard of living than their parents. Xers founded Google and Amazon. Gen Xers have come of age and are now controlling members of our society. Meet Generation Y, born 1980 through 1997. They are 88 and a half million people strong. They're referred to as digital natives. They grew up on digital technologies and social media. They're characterized as being idealistic, group oriented. They have a need to be heard. They are referred to as trophy kids because they were very nurtured. They're extremely tech savvy and products of helicopter parents. This generation is defined by the internet and the increasingly globally connected world. As children, Gen Yers were protected by their parents and are characterized as having grown up with the belief that anything is possible. Gen Yers' parents spent more time with them and were more hands on with them than any prior generation. Because of the support they enjoyed from their boomer parents, Gen Yers know that they are loved and cared for and have a deep down sense of self worth. This secure feeling makes the members of Gen Y believe in themselves and feel optimistic about their future. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, Generation Y is the most ethnically diverse generation in history, with only 61% of its members identifying themselves as Caucasian. This generation's social circles are also the most diverse with respect to religion and race. Gen Yers are often referred to as trophy kids. They grew up with the mercy rule, where they didn't keep score and everyone got a trophy just for participating. 
they had helicopter parents. The term helicopter parent refers to one who hovers obsessively monitoring their children's behavior, looking for any chance of problems or issues. Studies are finding this behavior can hinder development and independence. As teens, Gen Y is group-oriented. They like to share. 84% rely on friends and family to help them make decisions, often staying in touch several times throughout the day by cell phone, text messaging, IMing, and email. Millennials make a difference and stand out from their large numbers. They believe knowledge is power because it can impact their peers. This generation's introduction to technology often started in the womb. Many had an online identity before they were born. They are digital natives. They are also digital hoarders. 71% would rather get a new tech gadget over a new toy. As a whole, this generation is the most educated and tech-savvy of all generations. Understanding Social Media Baby Boomers and Generation X were very private. Generation Y is all about sharing. If you don't photograph it and post it, it didn't happen. Sharing is social currency to Gen Ys, enabling them to distinguish themselves and influence their peers. Today's 13 to 17-year-olds are the first generation to go through their entire teens with an array of digital devices and platforms. 90% of teens use social media and 75% have a Facebook page. Teens are avid daily users and many believe, I share, therefore, I am. It has become a platform upon which teenagers can express their feelings and voice their opinions. 44% of teens also feel addicted to social media, but found it impossible to disconnect. There is another downside to social media. FOMO, fear of missing out, has become an issue for Gen Yers. 43% say social media has increased their FOMO. Teens say people use social media to brag about their lives. 50% said they spread themselves too thin trying to keep up with their peers. Teens say they feel most left out when their peers are doing something they're not. And in case missing the party wasn't enough, social media and technology allows teens to post photos in real time, increasing the sense of being left out for those who weren't invited. Gen Wires support and believe in social causes. One person with a computer can make more change than thousands on the street holding signs. Facebook's I'm Voting app was credited with convincing 340,000 Americans to vote in 2010. As a group, they are walking the walk and volunteering at record rates. The trends are overwhelming. The rate of volunteerism has increased significantly and has doubled in the 16 to 19 and 20 to 24 year old demographics. Social media is credited with this trend. Some of the issues that concern Gen Y are The economy. Their generation will have to clean up the economic mess, and yet they're not the ones who created it. Global warming. The climate crisis has unified the millennials, and they've been making strides to become more environmentally conscious. The cost of education. College costs have risen, while wages for college graduates have fallen. 9.4% of college graduates are unemployed. 19% are underemployed. There's a huge generation gap as a result of the rapid acceleration of technology. The generation gap is so large that the advice young millennials are getting from their parents, guidance counselors, and professors, while well-intended, is not always right. Millennial college graduates are grappling with a huge disconnect between what they're being taught in school and the belief that a degree correlates with a salaried position. Many of the jobs they're prepared for are just not around anymore. American youth feel that education is most in need of a new, inventive solution. For the first time in history, a generation is going to be entering the workforce with skills in certain areas like technology that will be superior to their bosses and co-workers. Technology is advancing exponentially and is doubling every year. The rapid technological advances have brought many advantages and challenges to our everyday life. Generation Y was born into this time of immense change. They are called digital natives because they process information, make decisions, multitask, 
and learn new technologies better than any generation before. Young millennials are optimistic, and they're also extremely realistic and pragmatic. They face great uncertainty in their future, but because of that, they've become quick learners and adapt well. Despite what previous generations say about them, they believe that they're going to change the future. Improvements and updates in technology will never end. It is changing the way we live, communicate, and socialize, and it will be up to Generation Y through their adaptability, creativity, and skills to harness those advances to lead the way and create a new path for generations to follow. Generation Y is the future. I think, um, like, the online social media part of things, like, sort of, it, it, like, expands what happens in real life. So, like, if someone bullies you a little bit in, like, school or whatever, they, like, they really bully you online because there's no boundaries and no, so, like, it's all, people give you way more compliments on Facebook than they would in person. Like, everything's heightened. It's kind of hard to get by these days without having a Facebook because of all this, the updates with all the things you're involved with. It's just very difficult. It's also addicting. Like, I, mm-hmm. when I come home, I refresh it, I check my home. Even if I've already seen everything, I'm like looking through it. Even if yeah. I already have read it, I just am like addicted to it. Do you know, yeah. why do you keep checking it? It's like just a... It's a compulsion. It's, it's a com- yeah. yeah, I just do. I agree. And then it stops me from doing my homework. Yeah. And I, if I didn't it's have just, it, I would... It's such- I talk to seniors every day who are like, wow, I wish I really would have not screwed around on Facebook for my freshman and sophomore year. I'm having a lot of trouble with my like cumulative GPA for college and stuff. And there are kids who are brought up in other countries where it's just like, um, they, they've been raised to be a workforce with ridiculous discipline and stuff. I'm not saying that's right, but I'm saying they're way more prepared for what's to come and they're going to get the jobs. Okay, that, I bet if you like asked a lot of teenagers, like if they would delete their Facebooks, if there were no groups on there, they would like, oh, would say, yeah. I, would say yes. I would delete my Facebook in a I've, second if I didn't have instrumental. So on. many people spend so much time managing what people think of them on Facebook yeah. rather than bettering themselves as a person in real life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that honestly bugs me so much because you see these people on Facebook and all these like false compliments from people you know hate each other totally. and it honestly like yeah. it honestly <laughs> creates the most fake environment and as Michael said with like cyber bullying and stuff it's not just cyber bullying it's people aren't scared to swing on Facebook because they know nothing can like they're not gonna get hit back it's like cyber thing that nobody says anything in the real world to each other anymore unless it's like your close friend and a compliment mm-hmm. and I think if like kids our age spent more time out in the world like out of their phones and out of their computers bettering themselves as a real person rather than managing what their perce- what people's perception is of them on the internet that we'd have a much more productive generation. They've proven that after like two years of being in college that whatever technology that your college is teaching you is outdated already. Yeah. yeah. Which is like really scary to think that like mm-hmm. the job market, like what is going to happen? Yeah, like these really, kids are being yeah. trained for jobs that aren't going to be that are completely irrelevant and by the and time they're out of college. Of kind of like an unspoken competition that's mm-hmm. going on between yeah. every kid in the co- like every kid in the world. Right. It's yeah. like every, every every everyone's fighting for the same thing essentially. So it's like the like just the that like leads to like pressure and all this other thing all all these other things but it's like stress it's just the stress level at yeah. our age is it should not even yeah. Are, we should not be nearly as stressed. We're going to be gray, we going gray by the time we're all 20. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's not, it's like, like that's not a right. joke at all. I think that, as we said, like college education is outdated by the time you're halfway through college. I think high school education is years, years, and years oh, yeah. outdated. The teachers yes. even admit the textbooks it's, are from 1999. Yeah. You can't teach us things that, like, you can't teach us out of a textbook anymore. That's not how life works anymore. Yeah. Like, I've um, taken, so far I've taken two AP history classes, and one was completely textbook. One was you, you was taking advantage of the media to make to like approach the information in a different way, yeah. Yeah. and I can tell that's you real. I am learning the, so much better the information that's using the media. And last year was the best English class I've ever been in. It was the best yeah. class period I've ever been in because more in that class because we didn't have a textbook where when you when you use a textbook it's 
it's basically like your teachers say like this is the information that you're gonna learn about and this is all that happened. It's organized memorization. Yeah. And as soon yeah. as you finish it, and as soon as you get the A on the you test that it. you want, you put yeah. it out of your mind. I don't remember anything I mean, that I read. If you, yeah. we, when we get to use, when we get to use technology, and we get to use the internet, and we get to print out articles, and like that's instead of our textbook. There's so much more that you can learn it's about. And yeah. 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 So, the past yeah. few weeks, my teacher in English has been uh, using Twitter a lot on assignments, and I feel like it's very, very beneficial because you know, no textbook. It's actually for. A book we were reading, uh, Lord of the Flies, and it's very beneficial because everyone gets to tweet, everyone gets to spread their ideas, everyone gets to communicate. It's like a message board. It's exactly. Yeah. But the thing and is, everyone gets to say what they want to say about the book. Yeah, yeah. And, really. and the teacher gives his opinion. Everyone gets a chance to give their opinion. I feel like honestly, you gain the most from it. And it no textbook I, will give you any more. And nothing I, will give you. And more. I think the problem with the textbook learning is that that's not the way we live. We live our lives anymore. Yeah, yeah. We don't. Yeah. We're not in the textbook eras anymore. We're, in, we're yeah. past that. We're like pa we're said, at the we're point. Like you said, we're called whatever. It is. Yeah, and it's a, digital. Media. Yeah, and it's like exactly. we learn the way we process information now, and this goes with Facebook and with everything mm -hmm. and the internet. It's we process. We learned how to process information using te technology yeah. and using the internet and using right. other things and not a textbook. For more interactive. More interactive. Yeah, very. Yeah. That's the word. Like, interactive. With. The, the, I feel like the way that they're teaching is the way that they taught 50 years ago. In the 50s, and, people lived their yeah. lives black and white, and there were social like standards that people upheld, and yeah. this is a, it's a completely different era. Yeah, it's a completely there's different so much, era, and there's so much more now. There really isn't a right person now be, uh, yeah. yet, because yeah. we're the f we're really the first generation that's using it. And yeah. I'm, the, no, like, I, I mean, and yeah, the technology <laughs> we're using now is now integrating with the older generations. They, they're not as, like, it, it's not as easy to, like, communicate, to use it with other generations. Yeah. So I think when, once it's like, it goes to an, through an, the next generation with this new technology, I think then is going to be like, Okay, well now we can kind of pass our knowledge into it yeah. because it's, we're the first ones to use it. Because there's so much, there's so much technology. The 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 big the big thing for me is using that technology and putting it to uses other than just yeah. posting a picture of yourself on Instagram. If they put that research and money, energy, and experts to developing technology to make surgical procedures easier or curing diseases or just bettering people's lives. Like, we don't need to, like, integrate Facebook into, like, cars, like, which is now happening. Why? It's like really? we, your yeah. notifications come up of your blue. No but, 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 but basically what I'm saying is, like, we don't need to focus on how to do that. We need to focus on how to advance technology to actually solve real problems, not problems we think is superficial. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to know that we are not robots yet. We are, we yeah. are yes. there is so much left in us that is still human and still creative and I mean I don't know, we all just have so much like spirit left in us and I feel like the generations above us don't don't see that as much. I I really want the older generation to know that we are are like our own generation and that we're gonna do things our own way, like that they're not used to. And yeah. they should shouldn't judge us on it yeah. because yeah. we're we're our own. We we can go on our cell phone. Maybe our cell phone these days is there, I don't know, like playing outside with a friend. But I just don't want them to judge us on it because yeah. we do what we were grown up, what we grew up with, yeah. and um, it's just not really in our control anymore. We just sort of fell into it, and they can't really look down on us yeah. upon it for it. I want so I want the older generations to. Except that we have left the old gener the old era, and we've entered a new one, and that there, that's where all the backlashing comes from. Mm -hmm. It's like people that cannot accept that yeah. we left all that behind. Now we're moving on. We're not there anymore. So it's yeah. so I think that's that's what I want. I want the older generations to accept our where we are currently. The kind of cliche idea that they have for like teenagers now is just that it's a it's a cliche. And that there are there are teenagers like like us who realize how like technology and media affects us, and that there's still that there's people who aren't just obsessed with technology. Yeah. Yeah. That there's still some 
we're still real. And, yeah. you know? <laughs> I mean, everyone has said it all. There, I feel like there's a lot of resistance to um, new technology, and that's just the way that our world is working now. So why resist when you can accept and learn? I'm all for learning. Yeah. A lot of people say, it, like, oh, I was a teen yesterday, and yeah, you were, but it's a lot freaking different. It's time to move on, and that moving on is not a bad thing. Moving on, like, progress. That, like, that it's, it, it, time moves on, and so does technology and history, and everything is going to keep moving forward with it. So why try to, like, slow it down? There isn't one right way to do things. Like, just accept it and move on. Then. Yeah, but it's time to, like, let's go. Let's move on.